Hey guys, back again. Um, we're here with something special today. Uh, I got a request in for this uh, from Rob again, Rob C. And uh, this is everything you need to know about baby metal. Now, uh, before we start this, I'm just going to preface with uh, the fact that it is 43 minutes and 30 seconds long. So, uh, I mean, if you guys want to fast forward to the parts you're interested in, if you just want to watch my commentary, if you want to skip it all together, don't worry about it. I won't feel bad. I mean, it is a long video. So, um, yeah, 4330. So what I think I'm going to do is, because it's so long, I'll pause it uh, a few times throughout uh, and give my thoughts to that point. Um, just because, you know, <laughs> a five minute song, I can stay quiet and it's not weird, but for an hour, <laughs> it's a little weird. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan anyway. Uh, let's see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna clean up the screen, but before I do, uh, if you look right here, uh, there's my patreon link and song request link uh, You can help support the channel that those ways also, please like and subscribe uh, if you haven't yet uh, really helps the channel a lot these are all the the OGs that have been supporting the channel so far and uh, I really appreciate you guys a lot <sighs> 43 minutes all right, let's not waste any time now. I'm going to clean up the screen and we'll just get into it. Hello, and welcome to everything you need to know about baby metal, a baby. Hello, and welcome to everything you need to know about baby metal, a baby metal guide. There will be several other helpful videos in the description if you want to check those out. Now, onto the video. Baby metal is a Japanese kawaii metal band, which is a sub genre of metal they invented. The name baby metal is in reference to the birth of a new style of metal, not the age of the girls as many people assume. The original three members include, Su Metal, Yui Metal, and Moa Metal. They are backed by a group of musicians known as the Kami Band for live shows. They were formed in 2010 and have released three studio albums thus far. Now let's discuss how they got started. Baby Metal started as a subgroup of Sakura Gakuin which is an all-girl idol group that was formed by a Muse talent agency in 2010. Sakura Gakuin normally contains between 10 and 12 members at a Sakura Gakuin. Somebody in the comments said I haven't even heard of them yet and that I was a noob. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to have to explore that a little bit. But anyway, let's keep going. The time who fall between the ages of 10 and 15 years old. With the theme of school life and extracurricular club activities, when the academic year ends at the end of March, the group releases an annual studio album, new members transfer into the group, and others who finish compulsory education graduate after their senior year and leave SG to go on to pursue other ventures. It should be noted, Sakura Gakuin is not an actual school, it is just themed around school life, all the girls still go to a normal school as well. Sakura Gakuin has several subgroups, referred to as clubs, which is how Baby Metal started. Baby Metal was the heavy music club, which was formed by producer Keiko Bayashi. Su, Yui, and Moa all did Baby Metal stuff, while also doing other things in Sakura Gakuin at the same time, for about three years. In 2013, Baby Metal split off from SG and became an independent act due to Su's graduation and Baby Metal's rising popularity. Yui and Moa remained in SG until their graduation in 2015. Some of the other clubs in SG include Twinkle Stars Baton Club, Sleepies Go Home Club, Mini Patty Cooking Club, and several others. Sakura Gakuin has released 10 studio albums, one for each year since their formation, with songs from all the clubs and SG itself as a whole unit. On September 1, 2020, it was announced that Sakura Gakuin will continue on as an eight-member group until August 31, 2021, at which point the remaining members will graduate then, unfortunately, Sakura Gakuin will disband. Now, let's go meet the members of Baby Metal. Yes, we are Baby Metal, Su Metal, Yui Metal, Moa Metal, three groups. 
っと、スーメタルがボーカルを担当していて私たちユーメタルとモアメタルがスクリームダンスを担当しています。First, we have Sue Metal, full name Suzuka Nakamoto, who was born on December 20, 1997, in Hiroshima, Japan. Sue Metal is the tallest member of Baby Metal standing at about 5 foot 2 inches. She has been a performer most her life, starting off by winning a contest to appear in several jewel drop commercials in 2002. Then, in 2006, Sue was admitted to Actors School Hiroshima where she also performed with her sister Himika Nakamoto in a duo called Tween. In 2007, she was signed by a Muse talent agency after finishing in second place in an audition held by the company. She was then placed in a group called Karen Girls, which was formed to sing songs for the anime Zetai Karen Children, which was disbanded after the show ended. Sue also performed in a musical called Adventurers in 2009 and 10. Later on in 2010, Sue became one of the founding members of Sakura Gakuin, where she was the lead vocalist of the Heavy Music Club and became the second student council president, then graduated in 2013, but continued on as the lead vocalist of Baby Metal regardless. Sue was chosen for the lead vocalist role at such a young age due to her surprisingly powerful vocals and unique stage presence. In Baby Metal's first two albums, Sue Metal has four solo songs, Akatsuki, Rondo of Nightmare, Amore, and No Rain No Rainbow. Sue usually takes the leadership role for Baby Metal in most situations, she will do the bulk of the talking in most of their media appearances. キュートとメタルを融合した新しいジャンル、ベビーメタルというジャンルを作るべく活動しています。なので、衣装だったりとか音楽も可愛い要素とかっこいい要素がたくさん詰まった、また新しいジャンルを作っています。そうですね。イギ
Sue is well known for her commanding stage presence, great crowd control, and her lethal death glares. Lethal death stares? <laughs> really? <laughs> I've seen my kid do a worse stare than that. All right. Go. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> Despite her powerful nature on stage, Sue is very sweet and dorky when not in full metal mode. Nakamoto. Oh, and she has also been crucified on stage several times, yes, like Baby Metal actually crucified their lead singer multiple times. Next, we have Yui Metal, full name Yui Mizuno, born on June 20, 1999 in Kawasaki City, Japan. She is slightly shorter than Sue Metal, standing at about 5 foot 1 inch tall. Yui started taking dance classes at a very young age. She was inspired to join the entertainment industry after watching Sue Metal's former group Karen Girls, as their music helped her endure the life-threatening illness of a family member. In 2010 she was signed by Amuse and was eventually placed in Sakura Gakuin, where she would be a member of Mini Patty Cooking Club, donning the Yellow Bandana, Twinkle Stars Baton Club, and the Heavy Music Club, where she would take the role of Scream and Dance. Okay. I'm getting confused. Like, okay. So what's with all these clubs? I don't get it. Like, okay. So they were kind of born from some kind of school club? I don't know, like we don't have any of that crap here, so I'm not sure, it's kind of going over my head. It's like, oh, she was from this cooking club and that thing. And... What I am finding out about Japanese culture is it's very complex. It's very complex. Uh, there's way more to it than uh, well, what I'm used to, I guess. All right, cool. Yui was chosen for baby metal because of her short stature, similar appearance to Moa Metal, and her compatible voice with Sue Metal. Yui graduated from Sakura Gakuin in 2015 alongside Moa. Yui's most notable physical trait would be her cute chubby cheeks. Her favorite food is tomatoes, which she prefers to eat whole, and she has said she would want to eat tomatoes, quote, even when the world is ending. And it says that your favorite food is tomatoes. True. True. Uh, and tomatoes, do you like eating tomatoes, like just chomping into them, like eating an apple, or do you just like tomatoes on things? Yeah, eating it just like that. Yui loves to stargaze and has stated she enjoys reading books about constellations and that she dreams of going to space one day. She is also generally considered to be the best dancer in baby metal. This has earned her the nickname Yui Bot because of her precise dancing on stage, as well as her tendency to drift off and react slowly to things happening around her. This way? Yeah. There it is, the fox sign. 
ファンの人がいたりとか、本当にお年寄りの方から子供の方まで、そして男性、女性、アイドルファン、<笑>メタルファン、全然関係なくいろんなジャンルが好きな方がいて、そんなことも気づかないぐらい、神が公認、そんなことも気づかないぐらい、神が公認。みたいな生誕祭をドイツでやっていただいて、海外で誕生日を迎えることなんてなかった。Yui is fairly shy and timid and usually doesn't speak a lot in interviews unless directly spoken to. She does, however, just stare directly into people's souls instead. Yui got to perform Karen Girl's song over the future with Sue and Moa at the Legend D concert, which she said was a dream come true. Yui and Moa also danced to Over the Future for their entrance exam into Sakura Gakuin. Yui has done a few special solo performances on shows around her birthday, such as taking the lead vocal role for Headbanger on her 15th birthday and performing a cover of the song Cho Koto Love at the Legend 1999 show. And last but certainly not least, we have Moa Metal, full name Moa Kikuchi. Born on July 4, 1999, in Nagoya, Japan. Moa is the shortest member of Baby Metal, standing at just 5 feet tall. Like the others, Moa was also performing at a very young age. She was signed by Amuse in 2007, after winning an audition held by the company. In 2010, Moa was placed in Sakura Gakuin, where she was a member of Mini Patty Cooking Club, donning the green bandana, Twinkle Stars Baton Club, and the Heavy Music Club, where she also took the role of Scream and Dance. Like Yui, Moa was chosen for her similar appearance and compatible voice. In her final year in SG, Moa was elected as the student council president, and then graduated in 2015 alongside Yui. Moa's most notable physical trait would be her dimples and glowing smile. If you are still trying to remember which member is which, and you're trying to find Moa, just look for the dimples, you can't miss them. Moa loves food, and she'll make sure you know it too, as she always finds a way to bring up food in interviews. What are you looking forward to on this tour of America? Hi, it's America. Moa has also developed an odd habit of staring at people's hair in interviews, especially Sue Metal. There are activities and also absorbing. Sit up in the mosh pit. Live, だったりとかいろんな活動をするためのお告げをくれる方。Moa is known to be a very emotional person and cries easily, but she also spreads love and positivity to everyone around her. <laughs> what do you think makes people love baby metal so much? You're asking me? I'm asking you. What do you think? <laughs> mm, I want to know myself, yeah. <laughs> but I love everyone and uh, I hope we can continue to get love and support. Moa can play the guitar a bit, but has admitted herself that she doesn't practice nearly as much as she probably should. She also loves to mess around and have fun during live shows, participating in all sorts of shenanigans on stage. Moa has also done a few special solo performances on birthday-related shows, such as performing a cover of Love Machine at the Legend 1999 show, playing the acoustic guitar part for Shine at the Legend M show, and taking over the lead vocal role for Headbanger on several occasions. We also have the subunit of baby metal, known as Black Baby Metal, which is when Yui Metal and Moa Metal perform songs as a duo without Sue Metal. Yes, Black Baby Metal is a group of Metal and Moa Metal. In this new album, there are rap metal and black metal in the same way as Sue has worked on new songs. Just as Sue had her Just as Sue had her solo songs, there are four Black Baby Metal songs, Anadari Daisaksen, Forno Yuta, GJ, and Sis Anger. 
Moa and Yui have been close friends for a long time, and they were often paired together in Sakura Gakuin due to their similar size and appearance. Some believe the black part refers to the picture stories played before their songs. In the stories, Yui Metal and Moa Metal are trapped and changed into wicked characters singing rap music. Others believe it is in reference to the genre black metal, which makes sense considering that black baby metal songs tend to be on the heavier side. Yui and Moa actually wrote For No You to themselves. Okay, I, I really like the black baby metal. I mean, uh, I, and I didn't even know it was a thing until uh, I think yesterday or maybe it was the day before, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, more of that, please. Um, okay, so I'm still trying to get this straight. So they met in some kind of preparatory school or club through school or something and then formed uh, I forget how to pronounce it Saku Gurken or whatever that that first group was and then they were picked up by a company named Muse and then paired so kind of like uh Sounds to me it's almost kind of like those boys, boy bands, you know, like uh, One Direction or whatever, where they're just told they're a band. Um, I don't know. I'm still confused, guys. <laughs> You're going to have to leave a lot of comments to, to sort me out here. Um, I think it's just because, you know, I never really... I never really get into, you know, the backstory of a band. I, I don't genuinely care. I just, I'm there for the music. I'm there for the sound. Um, but this particular band has so much backstory and lore and it's almost like a book, kind of. You know, like it's it's almost like a novel, you know, that you're, once you incorporate all the different aspects and the different details and the different, you know, what I've been noticing. And uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, let's keep going, guys. We're... Uh, 16 minutes in if you're still with me all right bells while on the tour bus between shows the backup dancers you often see on stage with yui and moa during black baby metal songs are also referred to as sister bones Moa has performed black baby metal songs on her own as a solo on several occasions, but that will be discussed more in a bit. Next, we have the brains behind baby metal, Koba Metal, full name Kei Kobayashi, is baby metal's producer and the person who came up with the entire concept of baby metal. Koba Metal had been working at Amuse as a producer since 1996 and was a longtime metal fan. He felt that the metal scene was getting increasingly old and that it needed a jolt of youth to jumpstart the genre's popularity again. After seeing Sue perform at the Karen Girls Farewell concert, Koba Metal was taken back by how strong a voice and stage presence she had, which gave him the idea to have her be the front woman for the J-pop metal fusion band he had been planning. The idea being that Sue was such a strong performer that she wouldn't be overwhelmed by a full metal band on stage. Okay, so they just called the J-pop metal fusion band. Now I've been told in the comments it's J-metal. And then I was going to actually ask you guys, like, okay, is there a K-metal? Because uh, I'd be interested in checking that out too. Uh, I've heard of K-pop. But I've never heard of K-Metal. And I've heard it. Well, I've never heard of J-Pop. But apparently there is a thing, J-Pop. But this isn't J-Pop, it's 
J Metal. <sighs> Guys, you're killing me here. So confusing. All right, let's keep going. He stated that the specific trio of Su Metal, Yui Metal, and Moa Metal was the perfect combination, saying, quote, when I first heard Su Metal sing, there's not that many singers that sing the way she does, it was very direct to me, and metal bands don't usually have any dance aspect, so I thought it would be interesting to add that to the new future of metal, hence I selected Yui Metal and Moa Metal to be the twin factor in the choreography. When the girls were chosen for baby metal, none of them had any previous experience with the metal genre, and they initially found it to be scary and were shocked at the music they began working on. So, this is the first metal I've seen. I've seen a lot of metal, and 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 I've seen a lot of metal. メタルってすごく心に打つもの、心に響くものがある音楽だなっていうふうに。It wasn't until they saw Metallica perform live that they began to love and respect the metal genre. Now we have the person behind the choreography for Baby Metal, Makiko Metal, full name Makiko Mizuno, who has been the choreographer for groups like Perfume, Sakura Gakuin, and Baby Metal. And no, despite having the same last name as Yui, they are not related. Makiko began teaching dance based on her experience in ballet and street dance in 1996 at the age of 19. She has been a key part of Baby Metal's success from day one. Like the girls, Makiko had no previous experience with metal music but was able to adjust her groundbreaking choreography to the music as well as evolving the style of the dances with the girls as they grew older. Now let's discuss the musicians behind the girls. A quick side note, but whenever you see the guys dressed in skeleton costumes, that is not a real band. They are known as Baby Bones and were there to pretend to play the instruments while the music was played on a backing track because Baby Metal couldn't always afford to have a live band early on. Now, onto the real band, the Kami Band. The Kami Band is a session band that consists of various members that rotate in and out, often seen in white robes and corpse paint, depicting Japanese spirits. There have been a lot of different people who have played in the Kami band over the years, here are a few of the most notable ones. One of the guitarists, Mikio Fujioka, sadly passed away in January 2018 at the age of 36 due to injuries suffered from an accident while stargazing. In recent years, we've also- Okay. Stargazing. What it- How do you- I think that's the second time I heard somebody got injured or hurt. One of the girls did, I think. Stargazing. What are you guys doing over there? That you get hurt looking at stars. Like. What am I missing here? How, how do you get hurt looking at stars? I don't get it. Uh, like are you on a rooftop and you're looking up and you're not watching where you're going? Are you uh, beating each other with telescopes? I don't know. Like what's going on here with the stargazing? Maybe stop stargazing if it's so dangerous. I don't know. So seen the addition of the Western Kami band who tours with baby metal overseas. The addition of the Western Kami band has resulted in a change of costume for the Kamis as they now wear darker robes and masks. It should also be noted, but it isn't necessarily the Kami band members playing in the studio recordings of baby metal songs as they aren't technically considered a part of baby metal. However, Leda Cygnus has been credited with writing the bass and guitar parts for a few baby metal songs. There is a lot of lore around baby metal, which can get quite convoluted. I can't possibly mention all the lore related things in this video, there is so much that it would have to be in its own video entirely, so I will just mention some of the most notable things. Right First, we have the Fox God, which you will hear them bring up quite often. ライブだったりとかいろんな活動をするためのお告げをくれる方なんですけど
私たちは実際にお会いしたことがないのでどういう方なのかよくわからないんですけどでも私たちはいつも「FOX ゴッドのおかげで、まあ、日本以外でも海外だったりとかいろんなところでライブをすることができています。You will see foxes in some way, shape, and form in basically everything baby metal does. They have had some very elaborate sets based around fox imagery as well. Anytime there is a question in an interview the girls can't or don't want to answer, they will simply respond with Only the fox got now! Only the fox got now! Only the fox got now! They say this a lot less nowadays, and when they do it is usually in more of a joking manner. Only the? Fox got no. How, how did I know that was? Next, we have the hand sign you will see the girls making all the time, which is meant to symbolize the fox god, rather than using the traditional devil horns hand gesture used by most metal bands. Hi, it's a fox sign. It's a symbol sign. It's a symbol sign. Okay, I can't quite do that because I, I cut my finger in half. And they sewed it back on so my finger doesn't go straight, but yeah. So uh, I can't do a proper, uh, a proper uh, fox sign. But that's my problem, not yours. やっているのでライブを見に来てくださった方はぜひ一緒に狐サインを掲げてくれると嬉しいです。The baby metal fan base is referred to as The One. The song titled The One is a tribute song to their fans. They made an English version of The One as well, because they were touched by all the overseas fans who learned the Japanese lyrics to their songs, so they wanted to do a song in English for them. When they introduce themselves, they say baby metal death is a play on the Japanese word des, which is the word used for introducing yourself, like saying I am or we are. By simply mispronouncing su metal des, by saying su metal death they have a cute and metal way of introducing themselves. The song Baby Metal Death was a song they would often open up shows with in the past, as an exciting way to introduce themselves to the fans at the beginning of a show. There is lore based around a legendary corset referring to the neck brace depicted in the Headbanger music video. This is a recurring item you will see appear in a lot of baby metal things, especially their live shows. Sue Metal has been crucified on stage several times, mainly to symbolize her ascension from human being to metal goddess. The most notable times this has occurred would be at the Legend 1997 and Legend S Baptism XX concerts that took place to celebrate Sue's 16th and 20th birthdays respectively. The other times they have done crucifixions it was used, mostly because it looks cool, rather than having some greater story like in the two times just mentioned, such as when all three girls entered the Tokyo Dome show on crosses. There is a lot of lore based around Light and Dark, The Chosen Seven, and the Metal Galaxy which we will discuss in a little bit. Metal Galaxy? Chosen Seven? What? Rob, what'd you get me into? Seriously, dude. What have you done? What have you done? Now, let's talk about how Baby Metal went from a subgroup of Sakura Gakuin to the global sensation they are today. Baby Metal's first single, titled Doki Doki Morning, released in Sakura Gakuin's debut album in 2010. This song was recorded when Sue Metal was just 12 years old, and Yui Metal and Moa Metal were just 11 years old. Baby Metal's first CD single was a collaboration with the band Kiba of Akiba. This collaboration consisted of each band covering the other's song, which led to Baby Metal performing Kiba's song, Kimito Anime Ga Mitai, at a lot of their early shows. In 2012 Baby Metal performed outside of Japan for the first time at the Anime Festival Asia in Singapore. Throughout 2012 and 13, they released singles Headbanger, Ijime Dame Zetai, and Megitsune, leading up to 2014. It's kind of cool. I actually know which songs these go. Now. Like, I've heard them. 
I know which ones they're talking about. See? Okay, Rob, I'm getting there slowly. Which would prove to be a very big year for Baby Metal. In February <laughs> 2014, Baby Metal released their first self titled album containing 13 tracks. The album was received very well by both critics and the public, with it charting in Japan, America, Germany, and the UK. The official video for Gimme Chocolate went viral on YouTube in 2014, leading to many people discovering Baby Metal for the first time around the world. In the beginning of March, Baby Metal became the youngest ever female act to headline the world famous Budokan Arena, with about 10,000 fans attending each night. At the end of the second show, they announced that Baby Metal will be going on their first world tour throughout the year, including stops in France and Germany. After a fan-driven campaign titled Baby Metal for Sonosphere UK 2014, Baby Metal was added to the Sonosphere lineup. This appearance at Sonosphere 2014 became one of the most important performances in Baby Metal's history. Sonosphere 2014 was really the first time Baby Metal performed on a big stage outside of Japan. Many fans recognize this show as the moment Baby Metal was legitimized on a worldwide stage. はい、えっと、今年私が一番思い出に残っていることは、メタル好きの方に受け入れてもらえるのかなとかすごく不安な気持ちでいっぱいだったんですけど、いざライブが始まったら皆さん盛り上がってくださって、で、メタルの好きな方にも受け入れられたんだ、ベビーメタルってと思
They then commenced their Five Fox Festival tour, where they would do several shows in Japan with specific audience requirements, such as all girls, all boys, all children, and so on. This tour ended at the Big Fox Festival show on October 15, 2017, which would unfortunately be the last time Baby Metal performed as its original trio. Before the Legend S Baptism XX show in December 2017, which was to celebrate Sue Metal's 20th birthday, it was announced that Yui Metal was advised by her doctor to not perform at this show due to an undisclosed health issue. They considered cancelling the show, but went ahead as just the duo of Sue Metal and Moa Metal for the first time. This would also be Mikio Fujioka's last performance with Baby Metal before his untimely passing. The show went on exactly as it would have, just without Yui Metal, even having Moa perform the Black Baby Metal songs on her own. Despite Yui Metal not being there to sing her parts in the songs, the crowd helped out and sang them for her. Following this show, Baby Metal was about to embark on their 2018 world tour, and no announcements had been made about Yui's status, so fans assumed that Yui Metal would be back and it would be business as usual. However, this was not the case. They kicked off their US tour in Kansas City, but much to everyone's surprise, Yui Metal was not there, and everything was different. Sue Metal and Moa Metal were now positioned in the center, with two backup dancers off to the sides, Minami Tsuki and Minako Maruyama, who the fans nicknamed Muscle Metal. Moa was also now singing all of Yui's lines, as well as continuing to perform black baby metal songs on her own. The traditional red and black outfits were also replaced in favor of a darker, more mature look. It was not announced until after this first show that Yui Metal would not be participating in the US leg of the world tour. Sue and Moa have discussed in great length how hard the first stretch of shows without Yui was. The reaction to Yui not being there at Legend S was so bad that they thought fans would reject them without Yui and were worried people would boo them off stage and throw things at them. I wanted to know what's it like continuing on without her uh, and do you miss having her around? Uh, it's been difficult, but uh, her departure made a bond between Sue Metal and More Metal uh, even stronger. Despite this, they continued on with the tour, and it went about as well as it could have. On April 1, 2018, Baby Metal posted a mysterious video entitled Metal Resistance Episode 7, The Revelation, which explained that a dark side of Baby Metal exists with seven metal spirits and that a new era is about to begin. In May, another cryptic message was posted on social media stating that no one will know how the Chosen Seven will be presented, only the Fox God knows. Over the next week, they posted a series of images onto their Instagram story, labeled 1 through 7. On May 8, a music video for their new single, Distortion, was released, featuring imagery depicting the Chosen Seven. On Have I done Distortion? I don't think I've done Distortion. Hmm. Might have to do distortion. Mental note. On October 30th, a graphic novel titled Apocrypha, The Legend of Baby Metal, was released by Z2 Comics, telling the fictional story of how Baby Metal came to be. The first true foray into the dark side of Baby Metal would be at their Dark Knight Carnival show. However, before that, on October 19th, 2018, Amuse put out a statement that reads, Yui Metal had expressed her desire to return performing with the group in the following months after last December's performance due to health concerns. However, Yui Metal came to a decision that she will not be performing during the 2018 World Tour in Japan and that she will no longer be a part of Baby Metal. Yui also put out a statement apologizing for her decision and thanking the fans and everyone she had worked with for the last eight years. This was the last time anyone has heard from Yui publicly, aside from some brief comments she made in the Sakura Gakuin 10th anniversary book. Yui's statement, quote, I will do my utmost best to be able to again one day meet all of you as Mizuno Yui, has led to fan speculation that Yui will return as a solo artist one day, but nothing has been confirmed by either Yui or Amuse, so this is no more than speculation. Both Su and Moa said they hold no animosity towards their former bandmate. Sue also stated, Yui Metal is like a family member to this group. Although she has left, we'll continue to support her and hope that she can pursue what she'd like to do in the future. Sue and Moa have said that they both still talk to Yui 
and that she is doing well. Now, we have the first show since the official announcement that Yui would no longer be with Baby Metal, and the first true look at the new dark side of Baby Metal, Dark Knight Carnival. While Legend S was meant to represent the light, this show was meant to represent the dark. Dark Knight Carnival was heavily based on the Chosen 7 lore, which is why Sue Metal and Moa Metal were joined on stage by five backup dancers. including the Muscle Metal Girls, Minami Tsuki and Minako Maruyama, as well as Shoko Akayama, Katono Imori, and Saya Hirai. Throughout the show, various videos played discussing that, when light and dark intersects, the unknown dimension known as the Metal Galaxy forms, which is where the Chosen Seven reside. One of the backup dancers for this show, Saya Hirai, was temporarily used in Yui's old spot for several shows in Southeast Asia and Australia. She did not sing Yui's parts, just filled in the choreography. Baby Metal continued on as just Sue, Moa, and the backup dancers for the rest of the tour. On April 1, 2019, they announced they would be releasing their third album, titled Metal Galaxy, later that year. This album would tie into all the light and dark lore mentioned before. The Fox God sends a beam of light that leads to a goddess who must sacrifice herself to the light in order to be reborn as the new messiah. This sacrifice happens at the end of the Legend S show to Sue Metal when she is crucified. After this death, she flies off to use her voice to put lights in the skies in the form of stars. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I don't get it. Why does there have to be a story behind everything? Why can't you just make a song? Make a song, sounds good, put it out. People like it. Why does there have to be this great big complex thing I don't get it maybe it's because I'm old I don't know maybe it's a combination thing maybe I don't want to get it uh, just because it's so complex and you know I would I think a lot of you out there spend a lot of time researching this stuff I mean by judging by some of the comments like I've gotten page long comments about this stuff and can you just listen to the song and go yeah that's a cool song I don't understand why there has to be all this backstory and lore and you know dates and gods and meeting of the seven and what is all that about? I, I don't understand why that is part of their appeal. Uh, to me, and I'm just being honest here, like I'm not, I'm not dissing on anything. But to me, they're just three cute girls that come out with some pretty badass songs. Done. Done. That's all I need to know. You know? Why do I need to know that I don't get it. I don't get it, guys. These stars shine down upon the people who become the one. This light when paired with Dark Knight Carnival creates an intersection between the light and the dark, which then forms the Metal Galaxy. Baby Metal also revealed plans for their first arena concert in the United States at the Forum in Los Angeles, California on October 11th. This show was later revealed to coincide with the release of Metal Galaxy. However, before that, two shows were announced for June and July of 2019. At the first show, we got the big announcement about the newest addition to Baby Metal, The Avengers. Wait, no, not that. It was announced that a rotating cast of three dancers, referred to as The Avengers, would be filling in Yui Metal's old spot. Okay, now we got another group called The Avengers. That will dance in Yui's spot. Why do we have to put names to everybody? Why can't they just be called random backup dancer? You know what I mean? Like, I just don't get it. Um, like, 
I know you guys are, are diehard fans and uh, you know you you might take offense to, to my attitude I don't I don't mean it as offense I just don't understand why we have to have all this hoopla behind the scenes just to put out a couple good songs well many good songs actually I enjoyed the band a lot uh, but why am I going to spend hours researching all this other stuff I mean, okay, who's my favorite band right now? Uh, well, who's my favorite band historically? Guns N' Roses, right? Guns N' Roses has some, you know, uh, some stories about stuff they did on tour that were over the top and out of control and blah, blah, blah. But I wouldn't call it lore. Like, it doesn't have a story behind the band. Like... Oh, they made this song because, uh, you know, Uncle Jack told Mary Sue that, you know, the three girls from the, from the other village, it just, you know, I don't know why we need all this lore. Uh, maybe it's a, it's a culture thing, but I don't understand it. Like, I know you guys are trying to educate me and, and, and bring me into the fold, but, uh, I don't really want to get into the lore of baby metal, because, I mean, that's all I'd be doing, right? I'd rather just listen to the music and rock out. To support Zoom Metal and more metal, three brave Avengers. The Avengers do not sing or have a mic, they just dance. They aren't technically considered part of baby metal, as only Sue Metal and Moa Metal are marketed and promoted as baby metal. It was never even announced who the three girls were, but fans at the shows were able to recognize them. Let's take a quick moment to meet the Avengers. First, we have Riho Sayashi, who was born on May 28, 1998. Riho is well known for her time in the popular J-pop group Morning Musume, of which she was considered the absolute ace for several years. Riho is a very talented and charismatic performer. She actually attended Actors School Hiroshima at the same time as Sue Metal and was considered to be her rival as the two often battled for the top spot of the class. Riho left Morning Musume in 2015. After an over three-year hiatus, she reappeared to the public in March 2019 and was eventually revealed as one of the Avengers. On September 3, 2020, Riho announced that she has signed to Japan Music Entertainment as a solo artist and has since performed in several musicals and appeared on a TV show. Next, we have Kano Fujihira, who was born on August 28, 2004. Kano is a former member of Sakura Gakuin, where she was a member of the subgroup Sleepies and was the student council president in her final year, just as Sue Metal and Moa Metal were. She is currently a member in the relatively new Amuse unit at 1-5, which is another all-girl J-pop group. Kano appears as the Avenger in the Pop Paya, Elevator Girl, and Shanti 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 music videos. Kano never appeared at any of Baby Metal's shows overseas, most likely due to her commitments with Sakura Gakuin and at 1-5. And finally we have Momoko Okazaki, born on March 3, 2003. Momoko signed with Amuse in 2014 and transferred into Sakura Gakuin the following year until graduating in 2018. After her graduation, she left Amuse to go study abroad, as well as appearing in some TV shows and the Black Butler musical. Elizabeth. 
Momoko once said she had dreamed of traveling the world as a backup dancer for a big artist when she was older, which she now gets to do after becoming one of the Avengers in 2019. Due to their other commitments, it is unknown if Riho and Kano will continue on as a dancer for Baby Metal. Momoko has been the Avenger for the last 20 plus shows, and it currently looks as if she may be the only one in that spot for now, but only the Fox God knows. Only the Fox God knows. <laughs> Now we move on to some of the most recent news. Sue and Moa appeared in Corey Taylor's CMFT Must Be Stopped music video. Baby Metal featured as a guest artist on Bring Me the Horizon's EP Post Human Survival Horror on the song Kingslayer. Baby Metal's relationship with Bring Me the Horizon goes back years, as they have supported each other for a while, and Bring Me the Horizon toured with Baby Metal in Japan. So we thought we'd get Baby Metal on one of our tracks just because. We've got kind of like a cool relationship with those guys. I think maybe like five years ago we met them for the first time. And then he took us on tour last year um, in Japan. And it was just like the biggest fucking shows ever. And honestly, I think like their enthusiasm for our band has kind of got us bigger over there. Because like last time we went there, like shit just seemed to start to, to feel like big. We just kind of wanted to like celebrate our connection by having them on a song. As it drew near, Baby Metal revealed that they are celebrating their 10th anniversary with the release of a greatest hits album entitled 10 Baby Metal Years on December 23, 2020. Uh, we appreciate everyone for supporting Baby Metal. We are very excited for our 10th year. And please check out our best album and online events coming up soon. Baby Metal was then invited to NHK's 71st annual New Year's Eve television event. The honor of performing on Kohaku is strictly by invitation, so only the most successful singing acts in Japan can perform, and this would be Baby Metal's first appearance at the event. A performance on Kohaku is a big highlight in a singer's career because of the show's wide reach, as it is typically the biggest television event of the year in Japan. The artists are then split up into teams of all males and all females, then at the end of the show judges and the audience vote to determine who performed better. The female team won this year, which they hadn't done since 2016. In December 2020, it was announced that Baby Metal will play 10 shows at Tokyo's famous Budokan venue in 2021 as part of their 10th anniversary celebration. These 10 shows marked the final chapter of the metal resistance. Due to the pandemic, various policies were in place to ensure the safety of the attendees. All 10 shows featured the 10 songs from the 10 Baby Metal Years album, as well as the return of a few fan favorites that hadn't been performed in years. These shows were the first time any black baby metal or Sue metal solo songs were played since 2018. On April 1st, an image was posted on all baby metal social media accounts, simply stating, Stairway to Living Legend, of which the meaning is still unknown. After the 10th show finished on April 15th, a short video talking about the end of the metal resistance was shown. And with that, we are all caught up on the history of baby metal. Hopefully you found this video to be entertaining and informative, thank you for watching. Hello, and welcome to- Okay. <laughs> Holy crap. Um... Bots. Well... Here's the thing. Uh, I might sound like I'm getting frustrated. And I guess I am, kinda. It's just, I don't understand why there has to be a story for everything that happens with the band. Like, or every song, or every... I don't understand why they're... I don't get it. Um... What I do get is I love their voices, I love their personalities, they're cute as buttons, and they kick ass. That's what I get. That's the part I get. This doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, I have no idea why it even exists, this whole 
Fox God, Avengers. You know, I don't know why. Why? Um, if you have a succinct answer and can tell me why this is necessary in order for baby metal to be baby metal, let me know in the comments. Um, don't be rude though. Um, yeah, because I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. Like none of my, none, none of the other bands I really enjoy have all this extra, you know? They're just a band. I, I, it must be a cultural thing. Like even One OK Rock, do they have all this kind of lore and backstory and, and, you know the foxes and the gods and the avengers and the and the this and that and the other thing i don't know or uh i don't know who else have i done that's like is this a normal thing with bands because in north america you know you start off, you play in a garage, and then if you're lucky, you might make it one day. And there might be some funny stories along the way, but they don't make up a whole, a whole novel about your... Like, it's blowing my mind, guys. It's blowing my mind. Anyway, it was very educational. I did learn quite a few things. Um... I hope you enjoyed it, Rob. You're a jerk. <laughs> but I love you, and thanks for uh, requesting this. Um, yeah, all right. That's my reaction. Ciao.